Hey Hot Tots, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you a condo I toured, but also I'm going to just share with you my information and what I've learned so far. So I'm gonna share with you kind of the budget, what I'm looking for and all that. I didn't wanna share it at first because I don't want anyone feeling one way or the other, you know? Like I don't want anyone being like, that's it, that's all you're looking for, like that's not a lot. And then other people being like, oh my gosh, like that's crazy, like, you're looking for something so high. You know what I mean? Like I didn't want any things one way or the other, but either way, I totally understand why you guys want to know because I would want to know. It's like easier to look and see what's going on when someone, you know, the amount, but also I think it's interesting to know what are houses and condos going for in that area that I'm watching someone on YouTube show because I live in a different area. So what could money get you here that couldn't get you the same thing somewhere else or you could get more somewhere else, you know? So I will share with you my information. I'm not really weird about money. I just don't want anyone else to feel weird. So one thing is that when you are a first time home buyer, you can take on an FHA, F HA loan, first time home buyer, an FHA loan or a conventional loan. Um, to be honest, I did not qualify for the FHA loan because I make too much as a single person. Um, but um, that's one offer, that's one loan you could take out and you can pay like as low as 3% down. The next line is conventional loan, which you can pay as low as 5% down or go up. Um, I have a conventional loan where I only have to pay 5% down. I can pay more if I want to, um, which I will if, depending on what amount my place is for. But yeah, so I have a conventional loan. I will say that with the market right now, it is a seller's market, which means there's a thousand houses in Columbus for sale and there are 6,000 people looking for a house. So the sellers right now are able to ask way over asking. They're able to ask for nothing to be fixed, like say, no, I'm not fixing anything because they know someone else will offer that. Um, a lot of them are doing like only accepting highest and best offers. They're not taking the first offer like the people used to. It's just insane. All the houses in the Columbus area, the whole Columbus area are contingent or sold within or contingent within two days. So and that's because they're allowing tons of people to see it before they look at all of the offers and decide which one they chose. So will I ever get a house? It's up in the air. So personally, I am looking for a condo or a house. I know that both can have HOA fees. Um, if I get a condo or house that has an HOA fee included in it, I'm looking more from for $215,000 or under. So I've been looking at places from like 170 to 215 condo wise, because if you think about it, your mortgage is a certain amount and then that HOA fee is on top of that amount. So I want to keep that at a certain place. And so that's what I'm looking for in a condo. For a home, I'm looking for up to 230, 240. I was approved, I don't know if I said this already, but I was approved for a conventional loan and for 300,000 and some dollars. But obviously I'm not gonna spend that much because I don't want my mortgage to be outlandish. And I'm one person. So one thing that I've been doing with my offers to strengthen them because it is a seller's market is at adding gap coverage and also adding um, earnest money, which I'll explain. So right now in the market, it is crazy. So people are selling their homes for more than what they're worth. And when appraisers are coming back, they're saying this isn't worth as much as you say. So contrary to popular belief, when you get approved for $300,000 for your home loan, that does not mean you can spend it however you want. What it means is we will give you $300,000 if the house is worth $300,000. If not, we will give you what that house is worth and that's it. So for example, if a person is selling their home for $200,000, you get the appraiser to come in to say, is this house worth $200,000? This is after your offer has been accepted. So your offer has to be good enough to begin with for you to get accepted and then you get it appraised. You have to pay for someone to come appraise the house as an additional cost, and you have to pay for an inspection of the home. So those are two additional costs that I did not realize when I first started looking at homes. So not only do you have to have your whatever percent down, so in my case, I have to have minimum of 5% down, which on a $200,000 house or condo is $10,000. You also have to have closing costs, which is usually around 
three to five percent of the home. My lender said it would be about three thousand dollars. So already I have to have thirteen thousand dollars in closing cost and down payment right out straight out the gate. On top of that, you have to pay for the appraiser to come in, which is usually around like a couple hundred to five hundred dollars, I believe, and the inspection person to come in, which is around the same amount. I forget how much those are exactly, but I would assume that altogether I have to have at least about almost a thousand dollars saved for that. On top of that, in a market like this, you need to have extra money saved for gap coverage if you want to add that into your offer to strengthen it. So what gap coverage is is you're, a person is selling their house for $200,000. You want to offer, because you want to strengthen your offer, you can either offer $200,000, like what they ask for, or right now in this market you say, I will offer $210,000 pending appraisal with $2,000 of gap coverage. That means that if an appraiser comes in and says this house is worth, is not worth $210,000, it is worth 200,000. I'm saying then I will be giving you the 200,000 that my mortgage company is saying they will give me plus 2,000 cash of my own money and that will be it. Some people right now are saying not pending appraisal. They're just saying we'll give you $210,000 no matter what it's appraised at, which means they can be paying up to $20,000, $30,000 in cash of their own. So people are coming in saying, I will offer $210,000 for this home, which is 10 K over asking price, because that's what you have to do right now to even be looked at. And then even if the appraiser comes in and says it's worth 190, I'm still paying 210. I'm paying 210 no matter what that appraiser says. So if that appraiser says it's worth 190, they owe $30,000 cash to this person. And then their mortgage company will pay the 190. So your mortgage, your, the money that is loaned to you for the house is what it appraises at. That's what your bank will give you. So if the bank appraises your home at $200,000, they only are giving you $200,000. If you offer $210,000 pending appraisal, you're saying, please let it be $210,000 appraised at that amount. But if they come back and say it's not, you can only offer what you have, which is what the bank's going to give you unless you save your own cash on the side. It's crazy. Before, when you were buying homes, you could also do remedies. So right now, no one's making people fix anything before they buy that person's home. So before, when the market's normal, you can go into a house, you only have like one or two people looking at the same house as you, not 50, and you can say, okay, I'll buy this home at 200,000, your asking price, which is already so different than now. 200,000, which is the asking price, pending you fixing the blinds, fixing this door and, you know, fixing the oven. Right now, my realtor literally gave me a list of what buyers are looking for or they throw the offer out because they're getting so many offers and that's conventional, a conventional loan or cash, no remedies needed. So that means they will not make the seller fix anything. Gap coverage, um, which could mean any amount of gap coverage, but usually they want like um, whatever to be paid for, any of the gap between the appraiser and the total that you give. Um, but I don't do that, I only give 2K extra. And then quick closings is something that I've been seeing on them, and which means like you will close the second the bank gives you the money, that's when you're gonna close and you'll be ready to go and ready to move in. Oh, and then earnest money, which earnest money is something that goes towards your closing costs, so I don't really mind paying it if you're serious about getting a home, but earnest money is when you give like $1,000 up front that they put in like an escrow account, the buyer does, or the seller does, to say, look, I really want this home. I'm giving you $1,000 already to show how serious I am about this home. So that's something you can put in your offer as well. It's kind of like your way of saying, no matter what, I kind of really want this home, no matter what comes of this. And it just gives them a better feeling. It's so dumb. It's like, now I feel like they're just looking through offers and they're looking at the, t the bottom line. Bottom line, this one's 10K more than this one, cool. Bottom line, this one's giving me gap coverage, cool. And then they're just throwing everything else out. If everyone, anyone does asking price, I'm sure it gets thrown out the door because people want the highest and best. So that's it for all the information. I think that's all I needed to tell you. Yes. So payment wise, basically to buy a home, you have to have your percent down saved in cash. 
So mine would be 5%. So ex for example, like I said, if there's a $200,000 home, I would owe $10,000. So that already has to be saved in cash. On top of that, my closing costs, which my lender said mine would be around $3,000. That's for tax, titles, fees. Um, that has to be brought to closing. So that needs to be saved. Um, appraiser and inspection, you have to pay cash for as well. So basically, your down payment, your closing costs, and your appraiser and inspection money need to be all saved up before going to buy a home. On top of that, if you're doing it in this market, you need to just have extra cash saved up so you can have something more to offer. Like for example, like I said, earnest money that you can give up front or also uh, gap coverage that you can do during the process to help strengthen your offer. So without further ado, let's see this condo. This one is 1,586 square feet. So uh, tax-wise, in comparison to the other one, it's slightly more because uh, it's slightly bigger. But it was, uh, yeah. Fairly similar in taxes, but uh, they're roughly both around the same price. This kitchen at least looks bigger in person than it did on the pictures, I feel like. Oh, look, they have little snacks. <laughs> My friend lives in this neighborhood. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, this is the friend I knew. I gotta say, I do like this more than I thought I would. See, we might have canceled. Uh huh. It's actually like a decent big bathroom here. <laughs> yeah. The bedrooms look really pretty. Like they did all the big pillows and stuff. And this is a big size bedroom. Mm -hmm. Like look at this closet. Holy mo. Oh wow. Wow. And then you turn and it goes further down. Yeah, and this is cool. Mm hmm. Oh, well, this bathroom is a great size. This is huge bathroom, I feel like. This is so cool. Overlook that. And then there's this both side. This also helps me because later when I'm thinking about it. Okay, so you just saw that condo and one, I'm just gonna say this so I don't hear it from anyone else. I'm sorry if I'm quick moving my phone. I tried to be better at it this time, but you only have right now in this market, you have 15 minute time slots to see these homes. So I'm not only trying to look at it myself, but also trying to film it. 
So sometimes I'm not paying attention or I'm going fast because I had I would have to like move this slow for it to not be like fast moving and crazy. So I'm sorry, but I don't think it's gonna get any better than what this one is just because of the way the market is. I only have 15 minutes to see this place before I have to decide. And there are people waiting outside to get back into that place the second you're done. So it's just really hard to do it quickly. So I loved this home. The decor was older, but in a way, like it smelled like my grandma's house in there and I kind of liked it. Um, I loved the home. I thought I would move the living room to where the big dining room area was because they had that small kitchenette and then the big dining room. And I would probably put like that small little four seater table and chairs in there. And then for the dining room, I would place the living room in there. Then the front room, I was going to make an office, go up to the den space and make that an extra loungy room with my Peloton bike. And then the two bedrooms, all the bathrooms, like I loved this place. And I thought I'd make the basement, like paint the wall black on one side and make that my sips with Sophie, put my old couch down there and like that be my place to film. I did put an offer in on this place and I was in the running, but they just told me today that I did not get it. So it's really sad and frustrating. I really love this place. I love the neighborhood. I love the outside of it, which I don't show you guys just because, you know, privacy, but I loved the outside of it. I loved everything about it for the most part. So the kitchen did need updated, but those were things I was willing to do. So I'm really bummed, but I feel like I'm going to be denied a couple of times before actually getting the home I want. I also feel at least gives me more time to save a little more money so I can, my offer could be a little stronger, you know, so trying to take it with a grain of salt. It is frustrating though, because you're just, I'm so ready. And my lease here ends in July and I really, really, really want to have a home by then because month to month here is very expensive and I'm just so sick of this one bedroom apartment. I don't want to rent again next year because when I look at apartments that are two to three bedroom, which is what I'm looking for, I'd be paying more than a mortgage for a house. You know what I mean? It'd be outlandish the amount I would be paying. So it's super frustrating. This home was asking for no remedies as well. So basically an older person lived there and just said they're not going to fix anything. And I was fine with that. I put in my offer. I did the 2K gap coverage. I did a thousand dollars earnest money, which you don't have to give them unless they accept your offer. Um, and it wasn't the best offer they had. I also offered 10 K over asking price. That's it for today's video. You guys, I am sad that I didn't get this place, but I'm excited to take you along on this journey. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. If you liked it, subscribe if you haven't, cause it really helps support my channel. I post every Monday and Thursday. This is a random other day because I don't want to do this for my WW stuff. Um, let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions. Um, or want to know any other information that I may not have been clear enough on or that you would like to know in addition, I'm more than welcome to answer any questions um, or help you out the best I can. But yeah, I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.